Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here, and in today's video, uh, we're going to be breaking down the NBA slate on DraftKings and Yahoo for Thursday, uh, May the 6th. We got a seven-game Thursday slate to go over. Uh, as always, guys, we're going to go uh, game by game, you know, talk about each team on the slate, just give you my early thoughts, what does stand out to me um, at first look on uh, Wednesday night. Uh, but before we do get started with the breakdown, guys, as always, I would appreciate it if you would click that like button down below, and if you are new to the channel here, uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. Also, click the notification bell so that way you get notified every time I upload. You also do get notified every time I live stream. Uh, now, I was not able to stream Wednesday. I, th I thought I was going to be able to stream, but I had some things come up in the afternoon. Uh, but I should be back for a stream on Thursday uh, around my normal time, 4.30 Eastern. So if you guys want to come and hang out, I uh, should be live on my YouTube channel Thursday afternoon, um, you know, around 4.30 Eastern time. But yeah, guys, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Also, if you do really enjoy these YouTube videos, uh, they really help you out a lot. You want to see, you know, more that I have to offer. You want to get more content from me. I do have a lot of additional stuff that I post on Patreon. Uh, you can get access to my full updated core plays. Um, you can get access to our Discord chat, which is, you know, basically a group chat where you can, you know, ask me questions up until log, even, you know, after log, I'm in the Discord uh, answering questions for you guys. Also, I have my, you know, my spreadsheets. I give, um, I give my favorite plays at each position for cash games for GPPs. I give you know a little player pool, basically list off my favorite plays in order. Um, you know the guys I have the most interest in. So all that can be found on Patreon if that is something that does interest you. You can check that out. Link down below in the description. But let's go ahead and take a look at Thursday slate. Uh, we'll start off with the Bulls and Hornets game. So this is one that I, ha I do have a good amount of interest in, especially on the the Hornets side. But starting off with Chicago here, uh, Nikola Vucevic is probable for today. He's expected to play. Uh, Zach Levine, I'm pretty sure, is expecting to play as well. Uh, Levine's been out for about two weeks now, about three weeks at least, or yeah, I think about three weeks. So um, he's expected back though. So with Vuce expected to play, with Levine most likely going to be back. Like I really don't like anything from the Bulls. You know, Kobe White, I don't have any interest in now that Levine's back. Thad Young, Daniel Tice, I'm not going to play them with Vucevic expect to play. So really, this Bulls team is probably just going to be a full fade for me. I really don't see much here. Um, Levine, you know, in his first game back is probably going to be on some sort of minutes limit, I'd assume, given that he hasn't played in, you know, like three weeks. So I don't really want to go to him. Vooch, I don't really like on this slate. There's other studs I prefer. So I think we can go ahead and talk about the Hornets side, which is where I have most of my interest. Um, starting off with LaMelo at the top, 7,900. I still really like LaMelo quite a bit, even with his price coming up. Um, he was very popular last slate against Detroit. Um, he was one of the highest known plays on the slate, and it made sense. He was just underpriced at 7,100. He only played 31 minutes, which I, I would say is probably the one concern with LaMelo right now. Since he's come back from his injury, he hasn't seen monster minutes. He played 28, 30, and 31. My best guess, though, is that the minutes are going to con uh, continue to trend up for LaMelo. He probably gets like 32, 33 minutes today. Uh, Devontae Graham, I believe, is still going to remain out. So, you know, that does free up some minutes in the backcourt. Uh, they still don't have Miles Bridges. They still don't have Gordon Hayward. Uh, P.J. Washington is back, but obviously, you know, that's not really going to impact LaMelo's minutes. Uh, and then Cody Martin remains out as well. So I think we get like 32, 33 minutes from LaMelo today, maybe more. We know he's a very productive player when he's on the floor. Uh, this is obviously a guy that can, you know, contribute in all categories, has a ton of upside. He is still underpriced in my opinion. Like when LaMelo, when LaMelo is playing 35, 36 minutes a night, obviously we don't know if he's going to play that today, but if he does, I mean, he should be like 9K. I mean, we saw before LaMelo got injured, he was consistently priced around 8,500 to 9K. It's 7,900 in a good matchup against the Bulls. I definitely like LaMelo today. He's probably my favorite play from this Charlotte team. I do like him a lot on Yahoo as well, coming in at $34 over there. But there's a lot more to talk about from the Hornets. You know, Terry Rozier at $7,600, you could also go to. I would rather play LaMelo, but I think Rozier is going to be a lot lower owned. So if you want to, you know, make that pivot in tournaments, you can. P.J. Washington, you could go to as well. You know, he should get a little bit more opportunity without Miles Bridges. I don't know if I want to pay $6,600 for P.J. Washington, but I think he's viable at least. I don't mind him, uh, but I would say like once we get down below, you know, 6K past Devontae Grant, this is where I get a lot of interest. So Jalen McDaniels, 5100, I like him a lot today. I think he's you know underpriced here, especially while Miles Bridges remains out. You know, for the next two uh, two weeks or so, while Bridges is out, we're going to see the price just continue to rise on Jalen McDaniels. He's going to get monster minutes while Bridges is out, and we saw him play monster minutes last game. Uh, 39 minutes, had 37 fantasy points. He had a double-double, 10 points, 12 rebounds to go along with an assist and three steals. Also had a block, too. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, McDaniels getting big minutes right now. You know, 5,100 on DK. He still feels a little bit too cheap, especially if he's going to keep playing 35, 40 minutes, which I assume he will. Uh, this Hornets team, you know, they're, 
they're fighting for playoff position. I mean, they're, it looks like they're going to be in the playoffs, but they do want to try and get a better seed. They're wanting to win games right now. They're playing, you know, big minutes. Their starters are getting big minutes. They're running a tight rotation. So I think we get 36, 38 minutes from Jalen McDaniels and at 5,100, have a good amount of interest in him. And then Caleb Martin, I think, is a really good value as well. He started last game um, in place of uh, Cody Martin. He played 34 minutes in the starting lineup, had uh, 32 DK points. You know, he kind of kind of ran good, I would say. You know, he shot pretty well, you know, 42% from the field, 25% from three. He did have a block and two steals, but the minutes were there, and I think that's really all you can ask for. You know, at 3,900, if he's going to play 34 minutes again, I mean, it's hard not to like him here. Is he going to put up 32 DK points again? I don't really know, but if we're going to get 34 minutes from Caleb Martin, he can still easily give you 23, 24 DK points, which is really good at 3,900, and obviously he could put up more than that. I mean, the upside's there, so especially with the minutes there, which is really all you can ask for. Minutes are key, and Caleb Martin's going to be getting the minutes right now. So I do like Caleb Martin as well for a value at 3900 on DK. Super cheap on Yahoo as well. Definitely like him there too, $11 at the shooting guard position. So lots of like from this Hornets team. My three favorite plays are definitely these three guys you see here, LaMelo, Caleb Martin, and Jalen McDaniels. You, know, you could go to Rozier as a lower-owned option. You could go to P.J. Washington as a lower-owned option. Malik Monk had a bad game last game, but... I don't mind going back to him. We know Malik Monk has upside off the bench. We know he can get hot from the field. Really, he just he shot poorly. I mean, I, I think that was one of the reasons he probably didn't play as many minutes. He he shot 0 for 8. Literally didn't make a, an or didn't make a shot the entire time he was on the floor. We can't expect that or we can't expect that to happen again. So Malik Monk, if you want to go back to him, I'm fine with it. You know, I prefer like Caleb Martin for cheaper. I prefer Jalen McDaniels just because I feel like they're going to play more minutes. But Monk is viable in tournaments. And then the last guy I will mention is Brad Wanamaker. So Brad Wanamaker played 31 minutes last game. I don't know if we can expect this to happen again. I would say that the most likely reason he saw these minutes was because of Malik Monk. You know, Malik Monk only played 19 minutes. So I assume the reason, you know, you saw Wanamaker play so many minutes was because of Monk's, you know, not playing that well. Like if Malik Monk gets 25 minutes today, that probably means those, you know, extra minutes are coming away from Wanamaker. I don't know if I'd, I would definitely not play Monk and Wanamaker together, but you know, one of these guys is probably going to get like 25, 30 minutes. It could be Monk. It could be Wanamaker. Wanamaker's super cheap. I could see going there. You know, there is more minutes available in the backcourt, you know, with Devontae Graham expected to be out, with Cody Martin still out. So you could target those two guys off the bench. But my the three guys I really like from Charlotte are the three you see here. Uh, Lamelo, Kayla Martin, Jalen McDaniels, like all three of those guys a lot today. But we can go ahead and move on to the next game, talk about Brooklyn and Dallas. So in Brooklyn today, at the top, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, you know, I think once again, our type, uh, two guys you can look to pay up for today. Now, I don't think they're my favorite studs. We do have a lot of you know studs to pay up for. We have Westbrook on the slate. Uh, we have some other guys. You know, you got Luca, you got Steph, you got Sabonis. Like, there's plenty of stud options. But I would say KD is up there, probably with Westbrook in terms of uh, favorite pay up options. Like KD's just been so good without Harden. We know the usage on this team is going to be dominated by KD and Kyrie. We're seeing you know KD play monster minutes right now, 40 minutes in back to back games. If this game stays close, I think we get 36, 38 minutes from, from Kevin Durant. He's been very productive this year. Obviously, he's a you know great point-per-minute player. This is someone that should be priced uh, probably a little bit more than he is right now. I mean, 9,900 feels about right for KD, but with how well he's been playing lately, he should definitely be above 10K. Um, I definitely like Kevin Durant. I think I do give the edge to him over Kyrie. Nothing wrong with Kyrie. Uh, Kyrie was a lot lower owned than KD was last slate. Uh, they both had really good games. Uh, Ky Kyrie also went for 60 DraftKings points. You know, would I play these guys together? Probably not. But if you know, if you want to play Kyrie for lower ownership, I, I expect Kyrie will be lower owned than Kevin Durant once again. You could do that in tournaments. I have a little bit more confidence in Kevin Durant, but uh, Kyrie is also viable. But I don't think I'm going to any of the secondary pieces on Brooklyn. Uh, if I were to play somebody, it'd probably be like jo uh, DeAndre Jordan. He did start at center again, but he only played 16 minutes last game. The minutes, we just don't know what they're going to look like on a nightly basis. But if DeAndre Jordan is starting at center, there's at least potential for him to get like 25-ish minutes. And at 4K, he, he'd at least be viable. But my main interest from Brooklyn, just to keep it short and sweet, it's the top two guys. It's Kevin Durant. It's Kyrie Irving. Those are the two guys I like most. Uh, now, looking at the Dallas side, though, talking about the Mavericks here, I mean, it's a good matchup here for, for these Mavs guys. Brooklyn does play relatively fast. You know, Luka, 10,900, I think it's a decent pay-up option. You know, right now, first look, I prefer Westbrook. I prefer Kevin Durant for the savings. But I think Luka is viable. I think he will be relatively low on today. I don't see a ton of people paying up for Luka on the slate. Uh, one thing I do like on DraftKings, you can play Luka as small forward, uh, which does make him a little bit more appealing. You know, his floor is not nearly as high as some of those guys we've talked about, like Westbrook, 
as I've said before, Westbrook's just on another level this year. Um, he he's a guy that I prefer over Luca. You know, Kevin Durant I feel like could easily outscore Luca, and he's a thousand dollars cheaper. So I do prefer those guys, but don't mind Luca here as a payup option. I think he's a little bit more of a contrarian play, but still viable. Like I don't think I'm going to any other Dallas guys though outside of Luca. You know, Tim Hardaway did have a good game. Uh, I think he did start last game, but he did have a really good game. Played 33 minutes, had 49 DK points. You know, Tim Hardaway is super scoring dependent. If he's not knocking down shots, then he's very likely to disappoint. But he got hot from the field last game. He took 24 shots. There's obviously more usage available for him, you know, with Porzingis out right now. So I guess you could play Tim Hardaway. Uh, Maxi Kleber's out. Porzingis is out. You know, that frees up minutes in the front court. We never know what the minutes are going to look like for the bigs. Like, So last game, Dwight Powell came off the bench. He played 29 minutes. They did start Willie Cauley-Stein last game, but he only played 18 minutes. So like you just never know. Like My best guess is you're going to get a, a, you know, the center minutes. Uh, the center minutes are going to be split between Powell and Cauley-Stein. The matchup is good against Brooklyn. We've seen you know centers do well against Brooklyn in the past. If I had to pick one, I think I would prefer Powell. Powell's just been a little bit better than Willie Cauley-Stein. He's been more productive. Maybe they start him here. I, I don't really know. They started Willie Colestine last game, but Powell played more minutes off the bench. If if Dwight Powell does start at center, then I think at 3,500, you can definitely use him as a center value play. Um, I, I probably would just prefer whichever guy starts, but you know, that will be something to monitor at least. Um, I would say Luka is the guy that stands out most from Dallas, but Tim Hardaway for tournaments, I don't mind. Whichever guy starts at center, I don't mind either. But we can go ahead and move on to the next game now, talk about Washington and Toronto. So, uh, this is a back-to-back for the for the Wizards. Do keep an eye on that. I assume everyone plays here. Uh, the Wizards are fighting to get into the playoffs, so they do want to win games right now. And we're seeing them play their starters heavy, heavy minutes. So as long as today's game stays close here against the Raptors, I think we get big minutes from Russell Westbrook. I think we get big minutes from Bradley Beal. I said it in Wednesday's video. Russell Westbrook's just been on another level this season. Uh, once again, he just went out and absolutely crushed. You basically, I don't want to say you had to have him, but he was definitely a stud you wanted to have in your lineups. Um, the game logs haven't updated yet, but I'm pretty sure he finished with like 60 fantasy points. Um, he had another triple double. Look at 11k. Westbrook should not be 11k right now. I mean, he's just putting up, he's putting up literally 60 fantasy points every night. He's putting up a triple double every night. He's he's this he's the top stud on the slate until DraftKings raises his price. So I'm gonna once again plug in Russell Westbrook. He's the guy that I do like most at the top here. Um, he's my favorite play from this Wizards team. Bradley Beal, you could go to. I don't really like Bradley Beal that much at his price. I would just rather play Westbrook, but I guess Beal's at least viable. Outside of Westbrook, though, I don't see any standout plays from the Wizards. Um, Rui Hachimura was out on uh, Wednesday, and we did see Anthony Gill draw the start in place of Rui. I don't think Anthony Gill had that great of a game. Um, I don't know. If, like, the game logs, I don't think have updated yet, but let me check real quick, see if they have. So... Yeah, they haven't updated yet. Let me see how many minutes Anthony Gill played Wednesday. Because I think this does matter if he if he does start again for Rui. Uh, he could be someone we look to. So he played, he played, yeah, he only played 18 minutes in the starting lineup. Had 11 points and one rebound. Um, it doesn't look like that was foul trouble or anything. They just chose him to only play 18 minutes. So I don't know if we want to go to Anthony Gill, even if he start again, uh, or even if he starts again. Davis Bertans did play 27 minutes off the bench. So I would say that if Rui's out, like Davis Bertans is probably the guy that I would look to. He's 3,600. He is super cheap. We know Davis Bertans is another guy that's, you know, pretty scoring dependent, but he is a really good shooter. He's going to get more minutes if Rui's out. He would be my second favorite play from the Wizards behind Westbrook. Uh, obviously, that's depend on if Rui plays or not. But outside of that, I think that does it for this Wizards team. Now, on the Raptors side, I don't really like a ton from the Raptors here. This is a really good matchup for these Toronto guys, but they're pretty much fully healthy today. Uh, right now, at least, Siakam, Van Vliet, and Lowry, none of them are on their injury report. They're all expected to play. We've seen, though, with this uh, with this Raptors team, like, they will just, they'll sit guys, you know, I mean, I, it feels like they've sit, they're sitting someone, like, every game. I mean, last game, Lowry uh, sat out. The game before that, Van Vliet was out. For now, I'm just going to assume that everyone plays, but obviously if guys start getting ruled out, like if they rest Lowry or if they rest Van Vliet, that will change my thoughts on this Raptors team. But with everyone in, it's just tough to predict which one of the big three is going to really put up a big game. You know, Could they all do well here against against the Wizards in a good matchup? They absolutely could. But it's just tough to predict which one's going to go off. Like, you know, When you look at the guard pricing, you have LaMelo. I, I think I would rather play LaMelo over Van Lee over Lowry, at least right now. I think I lean that way. Uh, OG is doubtful again. He's not expected to play. So with him out, you know, there should be more minutes available for Stanley Johnson, for DeAndre Bembry. I don't really think I want to go to either one. Like, Bembry played 17 minutes last game. Uh, Stanley Johnson, 
he played 33 minutes. He, you know, he did get get the minutes, but he wasn't very productive. He only had 14 DK points. I know Utah did start last game, but I don't think he's going to start again. Uh, he played 30 minutes though. Again, you know, he wasn't very productive either. Like these secondary Raptors guys, like they just don't have a lot of upside when they're having to play alongside Lowry, Siakam. So I don't think I'm really going to anyone on this Raptors team. Like nothing stands out here. Kim Burch at 5,400 feels appropriately priced. You know, he's going to get 30 to 32 minutes. Could he go off here in, in a good matchup against the Wizards? He absolutely could. But I don't think I'm going to go to Kim Burch on this slate. So that probably does it for this game. Moving on to the next one. We got Memphis and Detroit here. Uh, Memphis, another team on a back-to-back. So uh, keep an eye on this. Uh, Grayson Allen did get injured in Wednesday's game, was not able to return. So there is a pretty good chance that he will be out today. I don't think that impacts a ton. You know, with Grayson Allen, most likely probably not going to play. We could maybe look to someone like Desmond Bain. Uh, Desmond Bain been so inconsistent this year, but could we go to him, you know, with, uh, with, uh, with um, you know, Grayson Allen likely to be out? Yeah, I guess we could. Desmond Bain probably is going to start. We'll play anywhere from like 25 to 30 minutes. He is super cheap. If you, if you did force me to play a Grizzly today, it probably would be Desmond Bain, assuming that Allen's out. You know, John Morant and J-Val, I don't think I'm going to get to either one on the slate. J-Val, I do like this matchup against the Pistons. The Pistons have been pretty bad defensively against centers this year, but I don't think I can go to J-Val on the slate. There's just going to be too, uh, too many other guys I feel like I'm going to prefer. So we can go ahead and move on to the Detroit side. Detroit is a team I do have interest in today. They are, once again, very shorthanded. It pretty much feels like, you know, Grant Plumlee, uh, Corey Joseph, it feels like these guys are basically done for the season. I mean, they're basically getting ruled out every day. Uh, right now, no Jeremy Grant, no Mason Plumlee, no Corey Joseph, uh, no Ronnie McGruder, no Dennis Smith Jr., and then Josh Jackson also out, Hamadou Diallo also out, and then Wayne Ellington, he's been upgraded to questionable. He has a chance to play. I don't think that really changes too much, though. Um, really, the guys we want to look to are the starters for this uh, for this Detroit team. So Isaiah Stewart, Sadiq Bey, Killian Hayes, um, Sekou, and then I'm assuming that Frank Jackson will start in place of Hamadou Diallo. Um, so just going through the Pistons, Isaiah Stewart is 6,500. I don't think I'm going to go to him on this slate. You know, even with Plumlee out lately, he hasn't really been that productive. We've seen the minutes kind of trend down for Isaiah Stewart. Could he pop off and put up 40, 40 you know, DK points? He absolutely could. He could do it at any time. But I don't think I'm going to play Isaiah Stewart. Sadiq Bey, I could could see going to. You know, he kind of came back down to earth last game. But he did shoot very poorly from the field. Only 16% from the field, 20% from three. Just had a really bad shooting game. The minutes were still there, uh, still there though. He did play 38 minutes. It's very likely that we get... 35 close to 40 minutes again from Sadiq Bay. You know, he feels appropriately priced at 6300 but definitely still viable um, on this slate just because the minutes and the opportunity is going to continue to be there. Killian Hayes, again, going to start, play around 30, 32 minutes. You know, without Corey Joseph, he's their point guard right now. He's going to have the ball in his hands a good amount. Killian Hayes is not someone that has much upside, but could he go out there and put up 30 DK points in 30 minutes? He absolutely could. He could be a pretty good play for 5200 so I don't mind him either. But I would say that my favorite play from Detroit is Frank Jackson. Uh, Frank Jackson is someone that I do like a lot here. 5,100 on DK. Uh, does feel a little bit too cheap for Frank Jackson. He's been pretty productive with this Pistons team. He's been around a fantasy point per minute player. He's been playing around you know 25 to 30 minutes off the bench lately. But now that there's no Josh Jackson, now that there's no Hamadou Diallo, I'm assuming that we do see Frank Jackson move into the starting lineup and probably see a few more minutes. And my best guess is that he plays around mid-30s minutes, probably 33, 35 minutes. At 5,100, given you know that he's been around a point-per-minute player this year, I do like Frank Jackson a lot, and I think he is my favorite play uh, from this Detroit team today, and I do like him a lot on Yahoo as well. He's very cheap over there, very affordable, only $12. Um, he's someone that I have a lot of interest in from the Pistons. So the starters, basically, the guys we mentioned are all viable. Frank Jackson is probably my favorite, though. I do want to mention Sekou as well. Uh, Sekou has actually been playing pretty well lately. He did have a really good game last game against Charlotte. The minutes have been there. It's just... The production's kind of been inconsistent. He hasn't really been someone that's been very productive. Like 29 DK points, 18 or 29 minutes, 18 fancy points, 27 minutes, 16 fancy points, 31 minutes, 16 fancy points. Like he hasn't been that productive, but he did look good last game. He kind of shot the ball really well, which you know was which maybe kind of regresses here, but the minutes were there. I think the minutes are going to continue to be there. This Pistons team has nothing to play for. They're clearly tanking. They're resting all their you know veterans. They're playing their young guys. The minutes should continue to be there for Sekou on a nightly basis. At 3,500, if you need a cheap power forward, I think he is totally viable. Um, when you factor in price, I would say that he's probably my second favorite play from Detroit behind Frank Jackson. And then Hayes, Plumley, or not Plumley, Hayes, Bay, Stewart, I think are all Good t- good tournament options. I don't know if any of them are standout plays, um, but there are definitely guys you could look to in GPPs. But 
Saban League, Tyler Cook, Okafor. I'm not going to these guys. It's it's just the, the guys that we mentioned, mainly just the starters. That's probably it for me from the Pistons. So we can go ahead and talk about the next game now. we got three more to go. we got Atlanta and Indiana here. So on Atlanta today, I really don't see much I like on the Hawks today. Uh, Trey Young at 9,400. Just I don't think I'm going to get to him on this slate. It's a good matchup. The Pacers have been playing really fast this year, but I don't think I'm going to play Trey Young today. There's just too many other studs I prefer. I'd rather play Kevin Durant. I'd rather play uh, Westbrook. I'd rather save salary and play a guy like Lamelo. So I don't think I'm going to get to Trey. Really don't think I'm going to get to any pay or any Hawks on this slate. You know, this is a back-to-back, so keep an eye on that. But if everyone's in, nothing really stands out from Atlanta. Now on the Pacers side. This will be a team we have to keep an eye on because um, Malcolm Brogdon did not play on Wednesday, and this is a back-to-back for the Pacers. If he plays, I don't see a ton that stands out from the Pacers. If Brogdon's in, I think the only guy that I would be looking to would be T- uh, DeMontis Sabonis, just because you know with, with him starting at center, we know the minutes, the opportunity is going to be there. He didn't have that good of a game uh, Wednesday against Sacramento, which was kind of surprising given it was a really good matchup. Brogdon was out Wednesday. Sabonis kind of busted, only had 48 DK points in 37 minutes, but if Brogdon's out again, I would definitely be fine going back to Sabonis. If Brogdon plays, that would lower my interest in Sabonis, but he would at least still be viable. But like Karis LeVert, if Brogdon plays, I have no interest in. Brissett, I have no interest in. McConnell is all dependent on if Brogdon plays or not. So that really does it for the Pacers. I think if Brogdon's in, Sabonis is really the only guy I'm considering. If Brogdon's out, I think Sabonis is a good option. I think LeVert's viable. I think TJ McConnell's viable. All these guys have been priced up, though, to where really none of them stand out as like top plays today. Um... So that probably does it for the for the Pacers side. I think we can go ahead and talk about the next game. So next up, we got OKC and Golden State. On OKC today, like, I just don't want to play any Thunder. I haven't played any Thunder in what feels like forever. I just This team, they, they don't want to win games. They're playing, you know, what, 12 guys a night. I mean, they're just spreading, spreading out the minutes so much that really just it's tough to roster any of these OKC guys. Um, Lou Dort, we know, is going to get the minutes, but... I don't really want to play him on this slate. He hasn't been that good lately. He's kind of come back, come back down to earth after having that you know stretch of games where he was playing really well. He's you know kind of regressed. Darius Baisley at 6,200 just feels appropriately priced. You know the matchup against the Warriors here, I would say, is pretty good. But I worry about blowout. You know, basically anytime OKC's on the slate, I worry about blowout because this Thunder team is just so bad. Like maybe, maybe Isaiah Roby we could go to. Isaiah Roby did start last game in place of Poku. He played 27 minutes, had 18 DK points. He's he's cheap. He's okay, but yeah, there's no standout place from the Thunder today. This is a team I'm just probably just gonna I'm just gonna keep avoiding these Thunder guys. I just don't really like much here. Um, so we can go ahead and talk about the Golden State side now. So on the Warriors here, obviously, like I said earlier, you know, blowout is a concern. Anytime the Thunder are on the slate, it's it's always gonna be a team or anytime they play on the slate, whichever team they face is gonna you're gonna have to worry about blowout because. The Thunder team, this Thunder team, they're just so bad right now. Um, Golden State's favored by 13 and a half. We could maybe see, you know, the starters only play three quarters here, but if we do get a close game and we do get full minutes from Curry, Draymond, obviously these guys have upside. You know, on this slate, I'd rather play Westbrook over Curry. I'd rather play Kevin Durant over Curry. I don't think I'm going to get to Steph today, but Steph's been playing really well lately. He's been, you know, having he just massive games after massive games, 62, 62, 59 DK points in three of his last four. Could you go to Steph today? You absolutely could. I mean, for what it's worth, he put up 67 DK points in only 29 minutes against OKC earlier this season. He could absolutely go for 60 and three quarters, and I wouldn't be surprised. But I don't think I'm going to play Steph today. Draymond would probably be the guy I'd look to most. Just 7,200 feels too cheap for Draymond. You know, the floor on Draymond's not that high, but we know the upside's there. He also crushed against OKC earlier this year, had a triple-double, 61 DK points. For 7,200, if we do get like at least 30 minutes from Draymond here, he could absolutely you know put up a triple double. I would say Draymond's my favorite play from OKC, followed by Curry. But I don't think I'm really going to anyone else outside of those two guys. Uh, Kent Bazemore, now that his price is up to 5,500, I don't really have much interest in. Um, so yeah, it's just it's really just Curry and Draymond, and that's probably it from OK or from Golden State. Uh, but moving on to the last game of the night, we got the Lakers and the Clippers. So on the Lakers side today, uh, there is some stuff to talk about here because LeBron remains out, Dennis Schroeder remains out, uh, Taylor Horton Tucker is currently questionable, which is, I think is pretty big. Um, this, I mean, this this Lakers team could be very shorthanded today, especially if THT is out. Um, Kuzma's probable; he's expected to play, uh, but KCP or KCP is also probable. So really, we just got to keep an eye on the status of THT. I would say that if THT is out. Uh, that does make me feel better about a guy like Alex Caruso. Uh, Alex Caruso was very popular last slate. He was minimum salary 3K. Started at point guard in place of LeBron um, or in place of Schroeder. Played 28 minutes, had 25 DK points. I would say that if Horton Tucker sits, 
we do probably get a few more minutes for Caruso. Now, Caruso's not a very high upside option. Like, he's not a guy that gives you a ton of upside. He was a really good value last slate just because he was minimum salary. Now that he's up to 4,100, it's a little bit tougher to roster him, but I would say that if THT sits, I do have a little bit more interest in Caruso. You know, Anthony Davis without LeBron, for 9,600, you could obviously pay for AD, but I would personally rather just play Kevin Durant. I think AD looks the best on Yahoo and just... He continue, continues to be too cheap on Yahoo. I mean, $38 for Anthony Davis is just way too cheap. You look at his price over there, you compare it to other studs. I mean, he's only a dollar more than Ka- uh, Kawhi Leonard. I know Kawhi's been pretty bad lately, but that just shows you like the pricing. I mean, he's the same price tag as Karis LeVert. He's the same, or he's a dollar more than Capella, Vooch. I mean, Vooch is underpriced on Yahoo, I would say, but Anthony Davis at $38, I do like a good amount on Yahoo. I feel like he just remains too cheap there. Especially when you look in like Kevin Durant's $8 more. You know, I do like Kevin Durant a lot today, but I think given the savings, given how much cheaper Anthony Davis is, I'm just going to keep rostering AD on Yahoo until they raise his price. You know, he hasn't really been amazing lately. But we know AD has a ton of upside whenever LeBron's out. You know, whenever whenever he's the one out there dominating the usage, AD can go, up, go out there and put up 55, 60 fancy points any night. You know, he's been kind of shaking off the rust lately since coming back from injury. Hasn't been insanely productive, but the minutes have been there. He's going to play probably 34, 35 minutes if this game stays close. For $38, I think AD remains too cheap on Yahoo, and he is a guy that I do like a lot from this Lakers team. A lot more interest in him on Yahoo than DK. I don't think I'm going to play Anthony Davis on DraftKings, but I do like him a lot uh, over on Yahoo. But that probably does it for the Lakers. Like Drummond, I don't think I'm going to play today. Kuzma, he burned me last slate. You know, without LeBron, without Schroeder, there's going to be more minutes and more opportunity available available for Kuzma. He was super disappointing last slate, but if you want to go back to him, um, I could see maybe going there, I think, without THT. If THT does sit, that makes me feel a little bit better about Kuzma. Really, though, I think it's Anthony Davis on Yahoo I like the most. And then on DraftKings, I think Caruso is a decent option, especially if THT sits. But that probably does it for this Lakers team. Now, on the on the Clippers side, really don't like a ton here from the Clippers. You know, bad matchup here against the Lakers who do play really good defense. You know, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, you could obviously play. Neither one stand out to me, though. If I had to pick one, I would rather play Kawhi just because he's cheaper. Kawhi has been pretty bad lately. Uh, just co- Since coming back from injury, he's definitely you know not been great. 30 minutes, 31 DK points. Last game, he was terrible. Only 23 DK points in 33 minutes. Um, you know He's not been taking a ton of shots. He's not you know really been getting a ton of usage. But we know Kawhi, at some point, is going to turn things on and get back to per- playing how he normally does. I think going to Kawhi makes some sense just because of the price. PG... And 9500 I just feel like it's too expensive today. So I really don't like a ton from the Clippers. Like I said, if you force me to play a Clipper today, it'd be Kawhi Leonard. But overall, this is a game I don't see a ton that really stands out outside of Anthony Davis on Yahoo. There really isn't much I like in this uh, Lakers-Clippers game. So that does it for all uh, seven games on the slate, guys. I appreciate you watching the video. As always, if you did enjoy, hit that like button down below and hit that subscribe button as well. Also, be sure to click the notification bell so that way you get notified every time I upload and you also do get notified every time I live stream. Um, I should be back with a stream on Thursday around 4.30 Eastern time. Should be live on my YouTube channel then. So if you guys want to come and hang out, uh, we'll talk through the slate once again, answer all your questions as always in the live stream. But good luck tonight, guys. Appreciate you watching. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Check out my Patreon content link down below in the description. And yeah, that does it for this uh, video, guys. Good luck. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.